Hey babe, uh, you want to come over for some dinner and uh, alone time? Wait, like you're going to make me dinner for real this time? Not just soggy leftover chips? No, um, but I got a jar of pickles with your name on it, sweet thing. Right. Okay, listen, I, I don't think this is working out. Why not? It's just not working for me. I mean, I feel like you never make an effort. You, you're mean to my cat. He's always walking around with poop nuggets stuck to his butt. It's gross. He can't help the poop nuggets. He's just naturally bushy-bottomed. <coughs> oh, typical. A bisexual woman dumping me for a man. I'm not dumping you for a man. I'm dumping you because you're mean to my cat. Uh, yeah, and he's a biological male. I rest my case. Oh, bye. What the? Hey everybody, welcome back to my channel. I hope you've had a good week. Um, today I just wanted to talk a little bit about how bisexual women suck in more ways than one, am I right? <laughs> yes. These days it feels like everyone is just jumping on the bisexuals are valid bandwagon. Like a ton of my lesbian friends just respect bisexual women for some reason. Even some straight guys I know. I don't get it, but fear not. For I have for you today, some reasons why it is totally hella valid to hate bisexual women. Especially my stupid ex with a stupid cat. Okay, let's try this. Part one, sluts. If you believe the earth is more than 6,000 years old, you may be aware that monogamy hasn't always been the standard for homos. Homo sapiens, that is. Our closest cousins, including gorillas and chimpanzees, don't practice monogamy, and probably our most similar cousin, bonobos, are just a bunch of horny polyamorous bisexuals. Even today, though a person may identify as monogamous, infidelity in supposedly monogamous marriages isn't uncommon, and even when nobody cheats, chances are they don't mate for life with the first person they dry humped. The version of monogamy which most of us today have inherited from our culture, the idea of finding your one true love, getting engaged, getting married, the bride's family paying for the wedding, the father giving his daughter away, probably originates in agriculture and exchange of property. For thousands of years, monogamy has been enforced by religious and moral structures such as within Christianity. Thou shalt not covet thy neighbor's wife, or his servants, or his ox, or his donkey, or anything that belongs to him, like his wife, or his donkey. Since through most of history we haven't had paternity tests, a woman's fidelity to her husband would ensure that any child she bears would belong to him would be a member of his family. Because if your wife or donkey has been off having sexy times with some other guy, then if that child grows up to look like that other guy, suddenly this guy could have a claim to the inheritance of both households. So we have strict rules about monogamy and inheritance. Women's sexual behavior was strictly policed in a way men's often wasn't. Inheritance and property all depended on keeping women celibate until marriage and then strictly monogamous. The Bible tells us that if a woman is not a virgin before marriage while still living with her father, she should be stoned to death. Luckily, all my viewers are virgins, aren't you darlings? Of course, we don't think of marriage this way anymore. Mostly. Women don't belong to men. Women aren't men's literal property in most places, but even that is a very new occurrence. We still tend to put a lot of faith in monogamy, and that's fine. It feels romantic, and if that's what you and your partner want, go for it. But monogamy is generally seen to be the standard to the point where I would say it's a little bit fetishized. Marriage equality has been a major fight and a major victory in some countries all over the world. Same-sex marriage has proven to be vital to gaining respect and validating same-sex relationships, proving that same-sex relationships are just as respectable as traditional straight ones. Unfortunately, bisexuals, as per usual, have been throwing a wrench in the works. Relationships are often framed as seeking out that one special someone, the one. You're looking for the one person you're most attracted to, most compatible with, and you pick some wrong people along the way to finding that one person, but there's someone out there who is built specifically just for you. I believe that a major problem we have with bisexuals is bisexuality inherently throws off the concept of the one. How can you have a man who is your perfect ideal man if you're capable of loving women too? Your the one is supposed to be perfect for you, the epitome of everything you desire in a partner. He is the most manest man in your eyes, but men and women often offer pretty noticeable differences. How can a man be the right man for you if you've ever felt desire for features he just doesn't have? But even when we don't believe in the concept of 
the one, the idea of identifying with your attraction conjures up notions of non-monogamy or infidelity. For example, in 1991, the Church of England released a statement on sexuality which specified that bisexuality was inherently wrong not just for the gayness, but specifically because it implies more than one partner in life. We recognize that there are those whose sexual orientation is ambiguous and who can find themselves attracted to partners of either sex. Nevertheless, it is clear that bisexual activity must always be wrong for this reason, if for no other, that it inevitably involves being unfaithful. For many people, the idea of bisexuals identifying with that ambiguous attraction makes us think of bisexuals as inherently non-monogamous. If you really plan on being with only one person for the rest of your life, shouldn't you just stop identifying as bisexual and identify with your attraction to that person's gender? If you were the man, just be straight. If you were the woman, just be a lesbian. Stop identifying with a term that makes you sound like you just want to bone everyone, you gross little grossy pants. Just because some men are sizzling hotties whose chests you could fry soy bacon on doesn't mean you should be sacrificing your feminist values for just your own joy and pleasure. Never again. Never. Of course, bisexuals aren't any more or less monogamous than anyone else. Some bisexuals are non-monogamous, some are monogamous. Same for gay people, same for straight people. Some straight people are non-monogamous, folks. It, that, that's just a fact. And of course, bisexual attraction doesn't mean you can't be perfectly happy with your partner. There are bisexuals out there who are perfectly happy with monogamy, and bisexuals choose to continue to identify with their bisexuality after finding a monogamous partner because I guess it's part of their truths, part of their histories, part of how they relate to themselves and their sexuality. <laughs> And of course, bisexual attraction doesn't mean you can't be perfectly happy with your partner. There are bisexuals out there who are perfectly happy with monogamy. But generally, non-monogamy is frowned upon in society, and bisexuality is often seen as representing it. Just conjure up an image in your mind of a woman being actively bisexual. Probably a non-monogamous image, isn't it? So reason number one to hate bi women comes down to moral impurity and a symbolic representation of promiscuity. Girl sexuality, bad. <laughs> Part two, football teams. For much of history, women have been held to a particular standard of purity. Sexuality was something men experienced, something they had little to no actual control over. Women, on the other hand, were more or less asexual, tolerating sex as their duty for queen and country. Unless they were, of course, a woman of the night, a disreputable mistress. Or French, maybe. Damn sexy French. A woman's climax was only supposed to be attainable through penetration, a helping hand for the clitoris, or the use of an ever-faithful electronic massager was seen as a sign of an immature sexuality by some more radical thinkers. Freud. It was Freud. Of course it was Freud. So even when women's pleasure was conceivable, it revolved entirely around what her husband could provide for her. The gay liberation movement opened new doors. Doors to a world where women's sexuality wasn't dependent on men, nor her happiness. A world where heteronormative structures of relationships and family were no longer taken for granted. But part of what opened the doors to the wonderful world of lesbianism was feminism. While many straight feminists saw lesbianism as icky, lesbian feminists tied their feminism and lesbian to one another. Feminism was the theory, lesbianism was the practice, making lesbianism the most radical form of feminism, the truest feminism, the true activism. Have you eaten today? Do your part, lesbians everywhere. This was called political lesbianism and wasn't necessarily tied to your actual experience of attraction. When you and I talk about lesbians, we're probably talking about our friends and family who are pretty exclusively attracted to women, but political lesbianism was a choice, and it was sometimes encouraged regardless of who a woman was actually attracted to. As a result, a bisexual woman's relationship to her sexuality became all the more political. It was one thing to ask a straight woman to identify as a lesbian, any who did were put in an awkward position regarding the fact they didn't actually want to sleep with other lesbians, but for a bisexual woman, political lesbianism was the ultimate test of her commitment. Feminism. Feminism is about women's liberation under the patriarchy. Political lesbianism was a kind of feminism which meant boycotting men. 
true equality among straight couples could never exist under patriarchy, and therefore committing to political lesbianism was a boycott which would ultimately place women in a position of power to negotiate their liberation. But that only works if women everywhere can fully commit to lesbianism, at least for the time being. So in the political lesbian context, a bisexual woman's relationship to her bisexuality becomes a test of her commitment to feminist ideals and rejection of dependence on men. If she couldn't commit fully to other women, was she really bisexual at all, or was she just straight? Another kind of important aspect of political lesbianism is that dating women is just supposed to be better. Why would a bisexual woman want to be with a man when she could be with a woman? Women are objectively just better at sex because they have their own home practice kit. Once you go gay, you never go astray. Bisexuals seem to be disproving this idea that lesbian sex was the be-all end-all of women's pleasure. If lesbian love was inherently so much better, then why were bi women not denouncing their attraction to men? But on the other side of the pitch, straight men were having a similar problem. According to Alfred Kinsey's research on women's sexuality back in the 1950s, almost a fifth of women were having a lesbian experience by the age of 40. How could a man's inherent, burgeoning, hairy sexuality ever be inferior to a woman's? How could a woman be attracted to both men and women and not choose the superior option, the man peen? Doesn't the world revolve around peni? Isn't that what the solar system is? Eight planets revolving around a massive burning penis called the sun. <sighs> sure as hell isn't called the daughter, is it? Where a lesbian has no choice in her lesbianism, a bi woman could potentially choose to be straight. This conscious choice against strict heterosexuality is what makes bi women so damn confusing. So we're left with two teams, both with something to prove, and this weirdo group of bisexuals who won't pick a side. Imagine a football game where some of the players keep switching sides in the middle of the game, or, or some of them just hang out in the middle of the pitch saying, hey everybody, the field looks real nice around here. Let's uh, let's all just have a lie down and a cuddle. What do you say? Mm. As with Freud's ideas on the immature clitoral orgasm, the world is in general agreement that the bisexual woman's attraction is just an immature one that she needs to outgrow. The problem with bisexual women is that they're both sexual and moral traitors. In a world where one is expected to commit to either men or women, ideally one single man or one single woman, for the rest of her life. Identifying as bisexual implies a level of sexual independence we just can't tolerate. But also, it just makes me feel like really insecure, you know? Like she's leaving me for a man with poop nuggets stuck to his butt? What's this say about me? Come on, I'm a real catch. So if you hate bisexual women, it's okay, you are valid. Like, it's totally gross. Bisexuals just need to stop. You know? Like, you're slutty, you're gross, and you're making me uncomfortable. I mean, it all makes me question my relationship to gender, to sexuality, to society. Who am I competing against to succeed in love? In self-worth? Isn't life just about competing for survival? If I can't find love, do I even have self-worth? Am I using identity politics as a shield to hide behind? When my real problem is my own self-loathing? Like and subscribe! Tune in next time to find out why it's totally heckin' valid to criticise trans women's appearance and still call yourself a feminist! Hating bi women isn't just coming out of nowhere, but it's also not necessarily a reflection of anything bi women as individuals have actually done. The problem is not with bi women, but with the concept of bi women. This notion taps into some of our deepest sexist conceptions about women's sexuality, autonomy, and womanhood itself. Women's bisexuality exposes the misogyny of, like, everyone. But because bisexuality hasn't been recognised and examined as a political issue to the same degree other issues have been in the mainstream, we let it go unchecked. We don't recognise it as a specific form of misogyny against a minority group. We just see it as an individual quirk or even something justified and progressive. Feminism is basically 
equal gender stuff like make everyone equal be good to women don't discriminate based on gender let men cry and wear lacy panties if they want to there are many variants of feminism conservative forms of feminism where a woman's sexual purity is still a priority radical forms of feminism where orgasms are a political statement one thing we've learned over the last few hundred years of feminism is that misogyny is insidious and when you're raised in a culture which takes certain values for granted Certain manifestations of misogyny can be rendered invisible. We know now that bisexual women are experiencing higher rates of domestic violence than straight women and lesbians. We know bisexual women are more likely to have abortions than straight women and lesbians. The number of women identifying as bi is increasing at a much higher rate than gay men, lesbians, or bi men. Bi women's realities are clearly feminist issues which deserve our attention. Bi women are recipients of misogyny in ways which many feminists don't even recognize. And I think it's time to change that. A future of feminism without bi inclusion is hardly feminism at all. Thanks to all my patrons, and a special thanks to Kat R, Danny Aiden Stone, Siobhan, Aaron, Eric Parkinson, Charis Edwards, ES, Gay Steve, Jamie, Juicy Fantasy Queen Plant Hookups, Jules, Kiki, Lord Asriel, Marla, Nico, Nina, or Beyond the Frizzy, Pregnant Seinfeld, Rock the Shell, Sarah R, Sindri LaRose, Spencer, Straw Fox, Susie S, and Talon. If you'd like to see your name up here or want to support me anonymously, please check out my Patreon. Um, otherwise, you know, you can like and subscribe and, and share with your friends and comment and all kinds of other ways to support me. Thank you so much and I'll see you next time. Was that good? <laughs>